Today, let's take a quick look at how to remove your seats, headrest, all the upholstery stuff, because I'm taking this stuff down to the local upholsterer and he's gonna redo this into something that's a little bit nicer than this. Mine's a little bit saggy on the driver's side and uh, this is kind of dirty and I didn't bother cleaning it. So I opted to get new foam and uh, I picked out a plaid pattern, which I generally don't like, but that's what I'm gonna try out. Trying out new things here. It's pretty simple to come apart. I will show you how to do that real quick right now. As we all know, the seat bottom has a latch in the front. You just pick up on it. And this comes right out, revealing the, uh, the ground there. It goes right through. So the back seats actually have two metal tabs that kind of just slide into a slot back there. I'll take them out and I'll show you. So you slide the seat out, put this aside. You can see slot one and slot two right there. This is my driver's side. It's a little bit saggy, it's torn. I wanted to replace this. So same thing, lift up the latch, unhook it, lift up the seat, pull back. Uh, you can probably see the slots better here because the light is not next to me. These are the two tabs here. It goes right in. So, cut this out. Try not to ding up your paint if you care. I've seen these trucks with like a full bench seat back like this. And I've also seen these trucks with two divided seat backs. I don't really know what the difference is because I only have this one, but it can't be that hard. Seat lifts up from the bottom. There are two screws, one on each side. It's a Phillips head on this thing right next to the seat belt. Take that out, go to the other side. I'm using a number three Phillips to remove some of these screws. Don't lose them. This should lift right out. Okay, I see how it works. So if you're down here, so now this should lift right out. This there's a tab here on this side, and I assume there's one on the other side that like slots into here. What you gotta do is lift it high enough for it to clear, like that. And then go to the other side and do exactly the same. Then when you come to the top, you'll see that there's a tab here. You just gotta push down on this to pull that tab out. Same on this side. I'll give you a closer look at this one. There's a tab tucked behind here, push down. Then I believe those two tabs in the middle, you just lift up. It's kind of complicated actually. There we are. Lift up and it's out. Some funny looking foam. Um, it gives you a good opportunity to clean all this crap out. There's a lot of fur in here. I wonder if the uh, prior owner had a dog or something in Japan. Next are the headrests. This is pretty simple. They're very exposed for Phillips head screws. Take those out and then there's screws in the back too. These are hard as a rock and I've hit my head a bunch of times because the suspension on this thing is not that good. This is why I also want to have some foam added to these at least to get a little bit of cushion when you whack your head on it. Once you have the headrest off with the brackets facing you, you'll find two Phillips head screws holding the bracket to the headrest. Let's remove them and head over to the upholstery shop. Ta-da! Well, now I gotta unload this. I just killed the battery. Car's not starting. Oh well. Well, that was a bust. I was hoping to take my raggy old car so I don't have to get the, a clean working car <laughs> dirty, but I ended up having to take a clean car anyways. So there's a lot of baby stuff in here. I didn't want to take this if I didn't have to. The wedge, the uh, seat back right there across the floor, the front seat cushions here, and uh, I think the headrests are somewhere on the floor. But 
Anyways, well, I have a new problem to figure out when I get home. All right, back at home here. My 2001 Ford Exploder Sport. It's a two-door, it's kind of cool. Let's put it down over here. Oh no, it's this latch. This latch is like rusted shut. That's not that great. Probably have to clean this up a little bit. To get this stuff off, you can get some baking soda, mix it with some water, make a little paste here. Probably have too much water, but that's all right. Here, I'll add a little bit here too. I'm just making a mess. <laughs> so, with the 20,000 toothbrushes that I have from use, can start to dissolve this just to get rid of it. See how it's starting to foam up with the acid? It'll slowly crumble away. Well, that's mostly satisfactory for me. Attach the old battery tender. It's charging, it's doing something. Alright, let's see, how can I do, how can I do this better? Well, since this is stuck, I'm going to try to, since this is stuck, I'm going to hit this with penetrating oil to try to clean all that gunk out of it. And then I'll use some uh, graphite spray instead of uh, lubricating oil. So let's try not to attract any uh, stuff to get stuck in there. Kind of hose this down, free it up. Now, look at that. Stuff's like magic. I'm going to hit this with a bunch of brake clean. I should have thought ahead and put a cardboard down or something. Whoops. I'm gonna lube the latch with graphite spray. This way, hopefully, it doesn't gum up too much. It seems to be working fairly well now. All right, I'll have to see how this goes. All right, well, now that I thoroughly made a giant mess here, and it's cold, so it's starting to freeze. <laughs> let's see if this, uh, let's see if charging the battery up works. It lives! That's all it needed, juicing up the battery. Uh, but now I have that giant mess to clean up. I will figure something out there. Oh well. All right, many hours later, not through the magic of YouTube, it's actually just through the magic of an upholsterer that works really fast. Um, my seats are out, my seats are back. Look at that, same day work. I mean, I guess it wasn't so hard to do it, but still, this is great. I decided to go with this plainish like gray and white plaid. It looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know what it'll look like once it's in the truck, but let's clean up the truck and install them and take a look. After some scrubbing, this is as clean as I'll get it. It's satisfactory enough. Look, it's actually almost white again here. This part, uh, it's gonna be covered by the cushion, whatever. So, do everything in reverse to put everything back. Well, here it is with everything reinstalled. This looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. 
And I think I have to fiddle with the adjustment a bit because I didn't know that there was a latch that kind of hooks on. So I might have to make a slit in the vinyl at the top, but it's pretty durable fabric. Should be okay. See how it holds up. They re-foamed my seat, so it's a little bit more comfortable. I think they added more foam to the bottom too. That's nice. That'll add to the suspension that this truck does not have. And the headrests, I had them add more foam too because the original ones were like rocks. It was just like a slate of rock. And every time you hit a giant hole and you slam your head back, that hurt. So this is nice now. There's like a inch or two of foam and it's like a nice high density foam. Soft, but thick and not too thick. It just looks like a much nicer place in this truck with this new upholstery on. Next thing is my uh, saggy old headliner here. I could have put something up there to replace this. Luckily, it's just a big rectangle. It's not too hard. Here's another view from the passenger side. Looks pretty good again. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching how to remove the seats, reinstall the seats, and this little modification I did to my truck. If you would like to see more content of my Suzuki Carry and my Suzuki Kara, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Ooh, that's a tight fit.